Okay guys, so I totally caved and bought this planner. I have been trying not to get the Hobonichi Cousin for what feels like years now, but after some careful consideration, I've convinced myself that I should get it. So today I wanted to walk you guys through kind of what was holding me back previously and how I've kind of gotten over the hump and rationalized why I should spend $70 on a planner. So before you even think about buying this planner, I would really recommend that you at least test the layouts and everything and make sure that you like those layouts and those work for you before investing in this $70 planner. The easiest way to do it is just draw these out yourself in a notebook. At least test, you know, this weekly spread. Does this vertical time the weekly work for you, right? If you don't want to draw it by hand in a notebook, you can also find dupes of these. I've talked about a really great dupe which is called the Kimbor from the Kimbor brand. This one is actually a cut down version of it. I cut it down to standard TN size. So you know I have tried this size before and it didn't work and see all the blank pages. So I tried cutting it to standard TN size but this is a really great dupe with really thin paper. It's not exactly Tomoe River paper. I think it is but maybe a different form of Tomoe River paper but it's really nice paper. The layout is exactly the same. The only thing with this one is it doesn't have a weekly but it's a great dupe if you guys wanted to try something. This is like a third of the price. I'll link all of this stuff down um, in the description in case you're interested but it did come in an A5 size and that's a great way to use a dupe and test it out for a year this is also dated so you don't even need to you know draw out the specific days or whatever it's already dated for you i mean another way that you can do it very easily is find some sort of printables there's so many different shops on etsy that sell hobonichi inspired layouts that you could use to test out then you don't have to draw it out you can just print it and test it that way and the reason why i really started to reconsider it is last year if you guys follow me on instagram you know that i started to get into digital planning and i created this um, hobonichi inspired digital planner to try to combat me buying the actual planner itself and i actually really loved this vertical weekly layout before then i wasn't sure if it would work because it's really plain if you actually look at the vertical layout it's literally just straight columns with some time numbering on the side and nothing else and I thought oh I need a weekly tracker space I need a space for weekly notes for a weekly to-do list and I just never thought that this layout would work for me until I used my digital planner and I loved it it was one of my favorite layouts for the year and so that's when I was like oh hey these work out these layouts really work for me so I just wanted to start <laughs> with that in the video just because it is really expensive and I wouldn't want anybody to waste like $70 on a literally a stack of paper. So I've always felt like the size of the Hobonichi being A5 size was just a little bit too big for me. So I am very used to a personal ring planner, which you can tell is a lot smaller, especially if you look at the size of the actual inserts, you'll see that really they are tiny compared to the Hobonichi Cousin A5 size. Or I'm very used to using the personal ring size which is a lot slimmer and shorter so again a lot smaller or the weak size so I much prefer a smaller profile something more narrow is actually my preferred size and that was one of the things that always took me away from the Hobonichi cousin so the reason why I like the smaller size is because I just find them a lot more portable like an A5 size I could never bring anywhere now the reason why I started thinking about this a bit more I'm thinking that maybe an A5 size could work for me is after the pandemic I'm now working from home a lot more and so a lot of the time I'm just in front of the computer 
And what I'm finding is that because I have a small workspace, the smaller ring planners actually don't fit as well on my workspace because it's a bit awkward to have the ring planner out as well as, you know, all of my other things that I need on my desk. So sometimes I'm using my iPad for things. Sometimes I'm pulling out some work reference materials or whatever it is. I just find it a bit awkward on my desk because it's not a very big workspace. So I was thinking with an A5, planner size it actually might be easier because I can just keep this open on my desk and then just have my arms over it and do my work and just keep it open the whole time and that's been really attracting me in that way I can also have my plans always open on my desk. I've been using my digital planner recently and I just love digital but the thing about digital is that you still have to turn it on because the screen turns off which is fairly annoying for me and I've just been finding I just want my plans in the background open all the time in case I need to look at it. I don't need to waste like the couple of seconds every few minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes to open up my digital planner. Then the other thing about this size, which was always a drawback for me in the A5 size is the daily pages. While I love this weekly layout like this, the A5 size for one page for a daily just seemed enormous. Like I could never fill this out and I never have, I don't think filled out on one day a page this big. But what I've decided to do is you see here on the daily pages, if you guys aren't familiar on the side here, it has the vertical like daily times or whatever for your schedule. And then on this side, there's like a faint line kind of in the middle here where it kind of delineates the two sides. And a lot of people do journaling on this side. That's the most typical thing, or you can do notes for the day or whatever you want on this side. So what I'm going to do is for me, I love a daily like this where it has a schedule because I really like to see how my day will flow based on the time of day. So I really enjoy a vertical daily. And so I know that I'll typically use this side. I also like to time block and all that kind of stuff. If you want to know more about my weekly planning in general, I did a recent video that I'll link up here about my weekly planner routine that you can really use for any planner that you're in. But there I talked about how I kind of like to time block my day. And I really like to um, see my day in this vertical form. So I'll know I'll always use this and I like it that you know, the dates already there. But on this side of the page, because I know I'm not going to dedicate one day with this and have the pressure of having to journal or write notes here. What I'm going to do is that this side, I'm just going to treat it as a notebook. And this side isn't going to necessarily be related to this day. And that makes it a lot less stressful to have to fill out the whole page, whereas I can still use this half, it still cuts it in half, I can use this side just as a notebook on its own. And then what I'm going to do is in this popular yearly spread at the front, I'm going to use it as an index page. And I know a lot of people have done this in the past. So on this yearly index spread, you see that it you know has the months across vertically like this and then it has each of the days this for me is way too small for pre-planning or anything functional because it's just like one line a lot of times I have more than one an event more than one to do on one day and I, that would just never work for me so I think the best for this layout for me is to use it as an index that way whenever I decide to you know fill out a page that maybe could be like two months back because I haven't used that side of the page I can just make a note you know, if it was October or sorry, if it was June 10th, I would just go to June 10th and write in, you know, a, a note about what I wrote here. That way, it doesn't matter when I use this page, I can always find it in the index and I can just use it freely and not feel any pressure to complete these daily pages to solve the issue of the A5 size. So the next thing that I really had concerns about was having a notebook that's for a full year. And I know I cannot stick in a same notebook for the full year. I just have never done it before. And a big reason why is because it's the same layout day in, day out. 
And I just get so bored. And that's why I love ring planners is for the versatility and the ability to change things out. I know that can be a con for some people, but for me, I love it. And so with a notebook, I'm like, I just cannot stick with the same layout all the time. I own an Etsy shop and I'm always playing around with inserts and I just want to use them. You know what I mean? And so recently how I got over that is actually on Instagram, Andrea or Straight Plans. She is so great at doing tippins in her notebook and it always looks so beautiful. She always says it's really easy, really effortless to add it into your notebook. And so I thought, you know what, I should embrace it and start doing it more. And then that way, it'll allow me a lot of versatility in my notebooks. So, you know, for example, I love the GTD method for those of you guys who follow me. That is the core of my method for a long period of time. And as an example, if I wanted my GTD master list in here, I could always just do a tip in, right? And when I kept seeing her do them in various notebooks, I was like, I could totally do this. So she incorporates kind of that homey feel of a bound notebook, but also with the versatility of different layouts by doing tip ins. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do is if I'm craving a different layout, I will just use a tip in for a printable as well as kind of use more of my sticky notes. I think I think that will maybe add some versatility as well to the planner. And then the last thing that I kind of touched on already is the fact that I'm not going to say and pretend that I'm going to be in this thing the whole year and that I'll be able to make it through the whole year in this notebook. And I don't want to waste a $70 planner, you know, like a $70 notebook. So what I think I'm going to do is if I cannot finish it, there's no pressure really. What I'm going to do is just reuse this as kind of like an undated notebook. Because the wording here is like so light and faint, I'll either just cover it up or I'll just use this as May 15th, but the day won't be right, but I'll just change it to whatever actual day it should be. And that way I can continue to use the notebook. And so it won't feel like it's wasted. So I'll use it that way as an undated planner. Or the other thing that I'm going to do is just use this as a notebook for practicing calligraphy. I've recently started trying to um, get better with my handwriting, practice calligraphy, all that kind of stuff. And that is great on Tomoe River paper. And so I can always use this as my practice notebook. So that's what I think I am going to do if I cannot finish this notebook and try to kind of make myself feel better about that aspect. So those are kind of the three main things that was really holding me back. And once I wrapped my head around kind of these options and solutions, I kind of felt better about the purchasing decision. So if you guys have any of those issues, maybe those will help you as well. Okay, so then just the last thing I thought I would share with you guys is how am I going to incorporate it into my existing planner system? And if you guys have watched my last video on my 2023 system, I'll link it up over here. I actually haven't had to change my system too much since that last video, and it's still really working for me. So I just am trying to figure out a way to fit this into my existing system without changing everything. It's definitely not going to be my one and only planner. So what I'm going to be doing is mainly having that Hobonichi cousin laying flat on my desk when I'm working at home day to day for most of the week. And then that way I can have it open. I can easily write in it, reference it. It's always open, always there. So I'm going to be using both the weekly as well as those daily pages. Like I talked to you about, I'm going to be using that timeline section and then the note side if I need notes. And I'll use it kind of like a notebook style so that the notes doesn't necessarily have to relate to that day because I'm not always going to be taking handwritten notes. A lot of my stuff for work will be on my computer. So that's what I plan to do there. Now, what am I going to do about my digital planner, which was my main planner or has been my main planner so far in the year? Well, I talked to you about the issues with like the weeklies. I do love it because then I always have it with me even when I'm on the go, it's already synced on my phone. So that part, I'm just gonna see if I'm really going to miss it. If I do, I might have to start doing the weeklies in my digital as well. But I don't want to fully get rid of my digital because it's the only way that I've been able to keep up with memory planning. And I just love being able to, you know, easily import my photos and add little pictures of the day because that's really how I like to memory plan is have pictures. I take a lot of photos because I have young girls. Maybe once they get older and they're not really into taking pictures, I'll you know transition to some like paper journaling, but that's the only way that I've really been able to keep up. I just like being able to easily write 
I also like being able to just use like the voice command to write out my thoughts instead of physically writing it out. Just speak to my iPad and it records it in there. So it's great. I love it. I don't want to get rid of it. Along with that, I have still been printing those daily pages into half letter discs. I talked about this last year or in that video. I really like that as well because then I kind of have the best of both worlds. I have a digital copy and then I also have the paper copy. I like it in disc. It's really easy at the end of the year. You know, just take the discs and that's my whole year of memories. Um, and I did that at the end of last year whenever I started using digital planning and I loved it. So I'm going to be keeping that. Then for my Hobonichi weeks, what I'm going to be doing with this is because I'm still going to the office now two to three times a week. I don't want to be carrying the cousin because it's way too big. I just don't want to carry it. Um, I'm going to bring the weeks and use this for notes and whatnot when I'm in the office. Now for the daily plans, I'm going to have to make sure that I copy um, my daily planning or daily items into here the night before, which is fine because I do a lot of my daily planning the night before anyways. And a lot of the time, all of my meetings are already on my Outlook calendar. So I don't think it's going to be a big issue, but I will be continuing to use this. I just love how portable it is. Um, and then the last thing is a rings planner and I was previously using my pocket rings that I love because I was traveling in January It was perfect and then I was really starting to miss my personal size And so I kind of moved back in there for certain things So in my rings what I've been using it for is anything project related So when I was trip planning I showed you how I was doing my trip planning I can link that video up there and I just like that in rings because it's so much easier to add pages and add sections where I need to. Whereas in like a notebook like this, if you do it in the back or whatever, I don't like how I'd have to be like, oh, I ran out of space on this page. So let me link it now to the next time I pick it up like 10 pages down. I just, I don't like that. I like it all in one spot. So I wanted to keep it in some sort of ring planner and that's what I have been doing mostly in here. I was also doing daily planning. Um, in here, but I will be moving that over into the cousin while I'm at home because of that issue with like the rings is just kind of awkward when it's laying flat and open on my desk if I want to use my iPad or other things on my desk. And I'm just trying to flip through here to see if there's anything else and then kind of referency type items. I already have kind of in rings and I'll just keep it in the rings. So that's kind of how I am planning to go about with my system and how I'm going to inc incorporate the cousin. I'll let you guys know and keep you guys updated as I use it for a couple months to see if it's working. If you guys want to see a full setup video of how I use like every single layout in the cousin, like the monthlies, those yearly index pages, I talked a little bit about it already, but more specifically showing my setup, just let me know down below and I can make a video about that. So thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way here. Please let me know down below if you are using a cousin, if you are thinking about using a cousin and any ideas you might have for us. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.